just arrived here at Fortitude Bali. Quite a cool place, look at these stairs. Crossfit or running? Crossfit. Sorry, it's running. <laughs> running sometimes. Yeah, running sometimes is good. Nice to meet you. Yeah, this is Brian, by the way. If it's too, if you're here and it's too tight, so did 
you're here and that's too tight, that might be too, too low. That might be a bit too low. So what you can do is just tie a knot in. If you have an adjustable rope, you can just adjust it, but this isn't an adjustable rope. Size it up. So you want, you want it to just, just be a little bit of 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 a Ready to absorb the contact and then spring up again. 
bend slightly through the knees, and then you're up again. Your head, you don't get much. You get away with one or two double unders, and if it was a competition to get one or two double unders, you'd win. But sadly, your wads are probably like, I don't, do, I don't do crossfit, but what is typical for double unders in your wads? Did you do like 30, 50? 30, 50, 100. Okay, that's hard work. Good for you guys. Um, okay, so that's, so that's the feet. We're going to move upwards now to our jumping technique. I'll demonstrate with the rope. Common errors with the jumping technique you might see or you might experience. The first is the touch jump. Not efficient at all, not pretty at all, and you can't build sustainable double unders doing the touch jump. The other is the butt kick. Also not a good jump. What you want to do is have a nice straight posture, you're springing upwards, collapsing at the knee and at the hip. Okay, you're going like this. Right? Okay. Good, wicked. Posture, you want an upright posture. Okay, you don't want to look down. Um, I don't know why you look up, but you don't want to do that either. You want a nice upright posture, looking forward so you've got a nice breathing passage. If you're here, yeah, you'll find it harder to breathe, and that's not good if you're doing a word with other workouts and So you want a nice posture, you're up here, and you're jump. Nice loose jumps. Next is our hands. After the jumping, the hands is probably the most important thing, the second most important thing. Now, a few issues. If your rope is too long, you might compensate by extending your hands outwards. You don't want your hands here when you're doing your double unders. Any ideas why? Just throw it through a Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sore arms. Because what you're doing is, when you put your hands out here, you're using your shoulder. You don't want to use that. That's not built for this sort of movement. This sort of quick circular movement, okay? And you can blow out your rotator cuff. If I demonstrate, um, has it, anyone ever seen like a cowboy, like a western movie with a lasso? Yes. If he's doing this, he can only go so quickly, don't worry, I won't hit you. But if you, if you activate your wrist, you're much quicker, okay? And it's not, you're not doing a whole lot of moving, you're just centering the motion in your wrist and just twisting very quickly, okay? So what you want to do is focus more on your wrist. You are here, you're not going to do much, much wrist work, it's going to be all of this. And that's not elegant and not efficient either. So, where you want your hands to be positioned, it's nice and tucked in. Okay, elbows pointing backwards, okay? Not like this, you don't want to flare up, you don't want to do that either, okay? The way to get into the correct hand position, when you do it with me, is just stand with your hands behind your side. Bring your hands up to your hips, touch your hips, and then just turn your hands up. That's where you want to be when you're doing your double arm, you want to be here, okay? You should be able, out of your peripheral vision, you should be able to see your hands. You don't need to look down, you should be able to see them, just tuck it in, okay? Then you're able to activate this turning motion. If you're flaring out here, you're not able to use this elbow joint. Now, one common misconception is that with the double under, it's all about getting the wrist to move really quickly okay, to get that quick rotation. That's untrue because the, because the wrist will tire out that way. Power the rope with your elbow. It's this snapping movement, and you just allow the wrist to be nice and loose and to just convey that movement, okay? So your hip is, this is your double under. It's not, it's not that, that's not a double under. Okay, check them out, right? So you want to do that, you want to get used to this kind of motion. It's a weird, it's a weird sport. It works. So you want to get to, used to that kind of motion rather than being nice and beautiful and tense. Nice and loose, nice and relaxed, okay? It's, it's hard to be relaxed when you've got a flying piece of metal turning around you and the potential it might hit you. But just try it and get over that and just be nice and relaxed and put the work on your jump, okay? So we want our elbows to be backwards so that we can get that snap, that snapping of the elbow. But if you remember, I spoke about not having your hands up here. And the reason for that is because you don't have any elbow snapping potential. You can't snap as much here. You want to be like this, if I turn side on, you do your double lunges like this, okay? Don't want to be here. You're not looking at it. Tuck in, just here. And then it becomes effortless, okay? So you're tucked in and you're just turning the rope down. Okay? All good? 
good? Cool. Are there any particular double under sticking points that I may not have covered that you might have experienced? Just throw them at me, or if you prefer when I come down to me individually, you can work with the double under. Just mention it and do that to you. So now, what we're going to do, we're going to go back into our lines, and we're just going to do some double under attempts. This is going to be very free flowing. I'm going to go around the room and we're going to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Just let me know anything at all, any other any secret points you have at all. We'll address them and we'll have the tools to work on the ground for you. Okay? We're good. So go ahead, just have at it. Based on what I've just di discussed with you, try out some of those things, implement some of those techniques. Hold on. All right. Your hand positioning might be a bit off. Just get that, come back to your point of reference, just jump in. 